they claim that they can do that. Uh, then we've got clear audience, which is about hearing. So they claim that they've got clear hearing. Uh, so they've got hearing outside of the normal range, and they can hear the voices of <coughs> dead people um, across time and across space. So then we've got clear sentience. These are interesting characters. They also call themselves empaths. Uh, and so they claim that they can read people via some sort of knowing. It might be touch or it might be via emotion. Uh, and so they claim that they can feel what you feel. So I was talking with an empath once and uh, she said, I, I can sense there's a person in the room who's got uh, uh, a brain tumor because I'm getting a headache. So um, these are, this extends to aura readers as well. They claim that they can tell us what, uh, what people are feeling and what illnesses they've got. And psychometrists as well. And I wrote an article about a psychometrist recently for my Naked Skeptic column. So these are people who can uh, claim they can read people by touching their personal objects. So they claim to be especially useful when it comes to uh, psychic detective work. Uh, they claim they can review events as well. So medical intuitives. So these people call themselves intuitive healers. So we're seeing crossover between queer sentience and medical intuitives. Uh, and so they claim that they can diagnose disease and that they can cure disease as well. Um, through a sense of knowing or through touch. Uh, I've heard recently, about a week ago, a woman calling herself a birth intuitive. Uh, and so she's like a psychic midwife and she claims that she can communicate with unborn children and put them in touch with their mothers. With the fetus. So uh, then we've got another another kind of uh, psychic, specialty psychics, so maybe pet psychics, so people like in horse whisperers. Some of them are calling themselves now the pet psychologists, which is a bit boring. So they claim that they can communicate with uh, animals uh, and tell the owner what the pet is thinking. Uh, and then we've got other kinds, maybe like past life readers, or people who claim that they've got special abilities like telekinesis, so someone like uh, Yuri Geller and his claims that uh, he has the ability to uh, change objects with the power of his mind. And then finally we've got diviners in, in my category here. So diviners as such, I don't think they invariably claim to be psychic themselves, but they have psychic tools. They have, uh, they use psychic divination tools to predict the future or to predict uh, uh, events for people. So they'll use cards, they might use rune stones, they might use crystal balls or tea leaves. So they don't necessarily claim to be psychic as such, but they, with using these aids, they're able to have psychic abilities. So why should skeptics care about psychics? Why should we? Why should we be concerned about psychics? Uh, I mean, should we be concerned about uh, the grandmothers reading tea leaves? You know, should we care? So I'd like to take a look at some of the dangers of psychic claims and some of the more corrupt forms of um, psychics um, by directing you to some skeptical resources. So I'm sure, once again, you'll be familiar with some of these sites. We'd like to consider this to be homework and to take down these links. So what's the harm? Uh, this is Tim Farley's excellent site. He documents hundreds of thousands of cases uh, where people have been harmed by claims of the paranormal and pseudoscience. Uh, and this includes psychic con artists and, and rip-off merchants as well. He's got plenty of stories there. And I don't know if you've heard of Bad Psychics. It's a, a site uh, in the UK. It's run by a fellow called John Donis. Uh, and so they examine psychics in the media. Uh, and so they analyse their performances in public and uh, expose frauds and debunk their claims. They've got a new podcast at the moment called The Bad Cast that I uh, work for too. And Stop Sylvia, I'm sure you've heard of, of this site. Uh, Robert S. Lancaster's infamous site about America's most notorious psychic medium, uh, Sylvia Brown. So this examines the claims, reports of failed predictions, uh, includes gossip from ex-husbands and myriad of ex-husbands, uh, and provides letters from her burned clients and, and stuff like that. It's a very valuable site. And finally, just for a bit of local flavour, uh, the Bay Area Skeptics blog. So uh, we, I contribute to this blog, and we look at local cases that uh, occur and that are reported in the media, uh, local psychics and so psychic predators, and 
Just to give you two examples uh, that we have treated, there was one case of a woman named Lisa Marie Miller, so I'm not sure if you heard about this, who built a Santa Clara woman of about $108,000 uh, and a car for psychic cleansing that she did, she performed for one of her clients. And then a woman called Janet Adams, who built an 83-year-old woman out of $80,000 uh, for curse removal. So she told this client that uh, if she didn't pay up then for some special prayers, then her husband would die of a heart attack. So these people uh, have appeared in court and uh, they're basically paying for their behavior uh, now. So, Let's look at some of these bad psychics, I mean, one of the, the very worst kinds of psychics. And once again, we're not looking at the, the grandmothers who read tea lakes. These are dangerous people. The so psychic detectives. These people claim to assist the police in missing persons cases and uh, in murder cases, but there's no historical evidence whatsoever to suggest that they're successfully aided in any cases at all. They've really hindered up investigations um, and caused additional grief to, uh, to families. If you check out the penultimate issue of Skeptical Inquirer, Ben Radford, the managing editor, he treats as uh, supposedly the best case, uh, best case of a psychic detective, a woman called Nancy Weber. Uh, and he basically shows that there was a case that she was supposedly involved in and uh, that she led police to a killer. Uh, and so he went into a great deal of research, he spent almost a year researching this particular case uh, and he found that all of her claims were, there was no validity to any of her claims. So this is supposedly the best case that we have and uh, it's turned out to, to really show this psychic detectives to, uh, to not have the abilities that they claim to have. And there's another case too of a woman called Danny Pedlow who was actually, she's uh, from LA uh, but she claimed to assist in the Sandra Canty case, if you remember that, that happened in, Tra in Tracy uh, last year. So she claimed a $30,000 reward for providing information to the police that led to the, uh, the whereabouts of the killer. Uh, but she was actually wrong about even the gender of the perpetrator. So she didn't receive that money, but she was in the media for that. So another kind of bad psychics, we've got psychic healers and psychic surgeons. So these people pose a risk, a health risk. Uh, they prey on the vulnerable and the desperate. And in a personal case for me, my uncle died about 10 years ago of uh, thyroid cancer. Uh, and he had to have his thyroid taken out and he should have undergone chemotherapy. Uh, but he decided not to do that. He decided instead to, to look at alternative uh, possibilities. And he went to the Philippines. Uh, so that's where this is very popular in places. For Americans, I think they go to Mexico and Australians go to um, the Philippines. So he went there and spent thousands of dollars on <coughs> surgery and of course uh, that, that was not helpful and uh, so he, he died not as a result of that, but that was wasting valuable time and, uh, and money. So I'm just going to show you So you may well have seen this before, but I think this is just a fantastic demonstration of how this can be replicated using magic. The laying on of hands takes on new meaning in the Philippines, where psychic surgeons perform miraculous operations without knives. I investigated this phenomenon, then went on The Tonight Show to demonstrate what I'd learned. Believe me, what you're seeing is strictly special effects, it's sleight of hand, and nothing more. And this is the way it looks. A little animal blood and a few chicken parts complete the illusion. Wow, that doesn't come up. <laughs> 